Welcome in to game night in the PCC on the Porter County Sports Channel, streaming live on the internet at regentsports.com, facebook.com slash regentsports, and Facebook and facebook.com slash Sports. We come to you tonight from Couch High School as Berkey's Family Farms and Couch presents the Westville Blackhawks taking on the Couch Mustangs in the championship game of the PCC Boys Tournament. Along with uh, Mike Jamia and Larry Babcock, I'm Jerry Siska to bring you all of the action for tonight's championship game. Counts trying to win for a fourth straight season. Westville attempting to win their second PCC title in the history of the tournament. So Nathan Laird is here as well. Bob Guerrero down there on the camera. Bob waved to the crowd. He didn't, but nobody would know who he was if he did. <laughs> All right, so the first game tonight, it went to the South Central Satellite. Final 53-31 over the Counts Phillies. And now the Counts Mustangs will attempt to win the PCC title. Gentlemen, as I mentioned, Counts trying to win for a fourth straight season. But this is a very different team than the team that won the previous three titles. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I, I think it, it is a very different team. Obviously, you lose the Kniples, um and uh, Wild. the Wiremen. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, when you lose those, I mean, those are four really good players. Um, but this couch team is a little different in the fact that they play a little bit more team basketball. You know, they're, they're still a good team. They play good team basketball. They were tested this morning, you know, against Hebron, um, but they eventually pulled away, and I think it was a result of playing that good fundamental team basketball. Westville, Mike, you had that game this afternoon, trying to win just their second PCC title ever. And they've got some names we'll call a few times tonight in Julian Ellis and Kenny and Caden Pepper. Yeah, absolutely. Katie, uh, Caden and uh, Kenny Pepper, Great front court players wearing number 33 and 34 for them. So Kenny's a senior, Sam, at 6'5. Caden is a sophomore at 6'4. They they offer this Mustang team something a little bit different. They offer that big size as well as they know how to get up and down the court. Joe Vick is an outstanding player for the Mustangs. He's going to have his handfuls down on the block. Uh, Aaron Ketchmark is going to have to be able to try to get running in transition because once you get set against this Westville Blackhawks defense, they have a very good front court. Uh, in those two players, as well as Julian Ellis is one of those guys where he is so athletic and he is going to make this one potentially a very fast up and down game. Maybe that's something for us to expect tonight uh, between these two teams. Westville comes in with a record of 10-5 and five. earlier today. They disposed of Boone Grove 59-56 after defeating South Central on Thursday night in their opening round matchup. Counts comes in at 10 and 4. They defeated Hebron 59 to 42 earlier today after an overtime victory against Morgan Township 43 to 38 back on Wednesday night in their opening round matchup. So there you have it. The Westville Blackhawks 10 and 5. The Counts Mustangs 10 and 4 for the PCC title. We've got a couple of minutes. Then it'll be time for the starting lineups and the opening tip. Let's take a quick break. You're watching game night in the PCC on the PCS channel. 1919, farming has truly been a Berkey family calling for generations. But it's not just a farm. There is much more for families to enjoy. The county market, with freezers full of homemade, home-raised products. The bakery, where pastries, donuts, and more are made daily. The coffee shop, with local roasted hot and cold coffee and espresso drinks. The restaurant and ice cream parlor. Stop in, you won't be disappointed. Berkey Family Farms, 205 South Main Street in Couts, and on the web at berkeyfarms.com. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean to cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. You're watching Game Night in the PCC on the PCS channel. It's the 2022 Porter County Conference Tournament presented by Berkey Family Farms in Couch Berkey Family Farms. Generations of family traditions since 1919. Visit berkeyfarms.com to find out more. 
All right, so we are just about set for the introductions of the starting lineups and the beginning of the 16th and final game of this BCC tournament here in 2022. Once again, it's been a fun week of basketball for all of us here at the Region Sports Network, and we are proud to be a part of bringing you this championship tournament. Hoping this will be something that will go on for the Region Sports Network and the BCS channel for years to come. So some of the opening announcements. Over on the far wall, students taking up the entire section from Couts over on the far side behind the basket. The section for Westville pretty full over here behind the basket close to us in our broadcast vantage point here in the balcony. You know, until this week, Mike, I had never been in this gym. This is really a nice gymnasium. It really is. It seats close to 1,300, and we're, I mean, I, I, I had to guess. We're over, I think we're over 1,000, for, oh, for sure. So. For, for sure. I don't know if we're at 1,200, but there's not many empty seats in the house from what we can see, and that's as expected. So now here are the here is the starting lineup for the Blackhawks of Westville. Five ten sophomore number twelve Gavin Cannon. Six four and a sophomore number thirty four Caden Pepper. At six one and a senior number twenty Cody Brooks. Six foot in the senior number 22, Julian Ellis. And six nine in a senior, number 33, Kenny Pepper. Drew Eubank, the head coach of the Westville Blackhawks. Now the starting lineup for the Couch Mustangs. Protect your ears, folks. It's going to get loud. Couch here at home playing in the PCC tournament as they, they host this year, and they're looking to get their fourth title in a row. First starter introduced, six foot in a junior, number 24, Tristan Ballas. Six one in a junior, number 30, Matthew Baker. Next up, number 12, 5'11", and a senior, Connor Croft. 6'2", and a senior, number 20, Joe Vick. And the final starter for the Mass for the Mustang, 6'3", and a senior, number 22, Aaron Ketchmark. The head coach of the Couts Mustangs, Kevin Duzan. So Hannon, Brooks, Ellis, Pepper, and Pepper for Westville. Cross, Vic, Ketchmark, Ballas, and Baker for Counts. Stay with us after the game as we name tonight's peak performers, celebrating the best performances on the court for both teams. Jumping it up will be Pepper for Westville. Ketchmark for Counts. Counts in the home whites. Westville in the road, Blacks, here we go. Tap one by the Blackhawks. This is Hannon with it. Brooks now. To the corner, three ball on the way, and good, Kenny Pepper. Kenny Pepper gets on the board first tonight with a three, and the crowd erupts. 2-2-1, two, two, half-court trap by West, Westville. On top, Ketchmark has it, gives it up Croft here right side. Ketchmark, now it goes the other way. Three ball on the way, that's too strong from Baker. Kenny Ford, Pepper with Kenny the rebound. Pepper. Sorry about that. No. Hannon with it. Whoa. Brooke, uh, excuse me, Ellis thought about that three from way out. Thought better of it, took it, but left it a little short. Baker with the board and brings it into the front court. 
Vic with it. Croft. Baker took a three in the last possession here for the Mustangs in the half court. Cody Brooks guarding was going to have to get a better closeout. Ballas for three. That's too strong. There's as, Kenny Pepper with another board. Yeah, as they've missed two threes to start, but actually not that bad of looks. Julian Ellis stops on a dime. And he hits the layup. Or excuse me, the jump shot. And it's 5-0 West, Westville. Yeah, so what I was saying is that Baker caught that ball in, in the low wing on the left side and he was able to dial up a three. Brooks came on a late closeout. Yes, he missed, and, and Kenny Pepper got the rebound, but you're going to have to get out on shooters because this couch team can knock him down. That was a delay of game warning to Westville. Next time it would be a technical foul. Here's Ballas. Ballas to Croft. Croft goes to the corner. Baker. Much Hits better. Vic. Much better closeout by Brooks there when Baker catches it in that corner. Ballas, the catch mark. Who scores it? Aaron Ketchmark with the field goal. Great ball movement. Great skip pass way to reverse the ball and to see the basket area for Ketchmark for an easy two. Hannon. Hannon gets a screen, takes it to the free throw line, dumps off. Caden Pepper couldn't get it to fall. Great pass by Hannon there, able to attack it into the paint and dump it off there for Caden Pepper. As Vic tried to make a move and put the ball on the floor, he was fouled. 12, Gavin Hannon with his first foul, his first team second. So here's Croft with it from out of bounds under his own basket. Baker has it. Croft for three from the corner, hits it, and we're tied at five. Yeah, Brooks looked like he was looking at Baker there, didn't really see Croft come sneak in right there in that corner. He's able to catch it and put it up right away and drill it. Jumper, good, that's Julian Ellis. Julian Ellis is a shot creator, folks. He is able to make those difficult off-balance shots. He gets the one-legged jumper to fall. He can stop on a dime. He's so versatile when he catches the ball, and he's just outside of the paint. Nice pass, and Baker's got a good look from three. Misses it badly. Chased down by Ketchmark. Croft. And Ballas. Elbow, that's Vic. Ballas, Croft. Five minutes remaining in this opening quarter. Blackhawks, seven. Mustangs, five. Long three ball. That's off the iron. No good by Croft. Battle for the loose ball. Last touch by Baker. It'll go to Westville. Hannon's going to bring it up here, and what we've seen so far is that Julian Ellis is a, a big-time threat in the mid-range. Kenny Pepper able to shoot, looking to get a pick-and-roll here, perhaps. The lefty Hannon puts up a three. It's off the iron, no good. Baker with the board. He'll bring it the other way for the Mustangs. Gives it up to Croft. Yeah, the Blackhawks had a good look earlier in the pick-and-roll with Caden Pepper. We'll see if they go back to that. But good defense here by the Blackhawks as they're able to get a steal there, and that's Ellis. Picked up the pass from Ketchmark, picked it up. But Ellis ended up stepping on the sideline, so it goes back to the Mustangs. Yeah, both teams are going to look to run as often as they can. After the steal by Ellis, he was ready to go, but just stepped on the black paint outside of the sideline right there. Baker. Cut off. Because he wanted to dribble it. And being cut off and forcing him to pass, because he had a whole different idea about dribbling around, it forced the bad pass, an unforced or a turnover by Gouts. Absolutely, it's being able to pressure, but pressure in a smart way, in a very controlled and collective manner. We've got... They say he pushed off. Okay. Julian Ellis picks up his first, team third. We've hit the midway point of quarter number one. Westville seven, Gouts five. Ballas finds some space, takes the runner, banks it off the glass and ties the game. Good strong take there by Ballas. You need to get paint touches against this Westville Blackhawks defense. Brooks thought about it, gives it up to Ellis. 
Ellis looking to shoot all the way around. He does it. Hits it. Julian Ellis. If you're on an island with Julian Ellis, you're not going to have a good time. You really aren't. You're going to have to be able to communicate. You're going to be ha have to be able to get that help side there in the event that he drives. But if he's going to step back on you, it's going to be very, very difficult. Baker. Well, you can see already that Ellis pretty much could score or at least create a shot whenever he wants. It's going to become a matter of can you keep the basketball out of his hands. Yeah, he's a pure shot creator. And the thing with him is that he's and active in the passing lanes right on cue with the great outlet pass. Great read by Ellis. Intercepted the pass, then a great pass down the floor to Cody Brooks for the layup. Created the play by creating the turnover and then gets the assist. Croft for three, bingo. Needed that. Connor Croft makes a big three in a much needed way to get this to a one point game. Here's Brooks and Hannon. Ellis. He's just gonna fire, drops it. Julian Ellis, you can't leave him that open. That's the thing with, Jul with Julian Ellis, is that with him being a shot creator, you're going to have to be able to crowd him. When he catches the ball, you're going to have to make sure that you get a touch on him. You can't make it easy. You can't let him initiate what he wants to do. You, as a defender, have to move him. You have to dictate space. Foul against Gavin Hannon, his second, team fourth. Into the game, Andrew Husky for Westville. Depth will be something that plays into this game. Second game of the day for both of these squads. And neither go very deep from watching him play earlier this week. Shot up and no good by Ballas, but he was fouled. He'll get a couple of free throws. Yeah, good patience by Ballas. Able to get the ball right underneath the basket. Pump fake. Get both Pepper brothers in the air. And he's able to get a chance at the line to shoot two. Caden Pepper picks up the foul. His first and team's fifth. First free throw by Ballas, good. Second free throw by Ballas, good. Knocking down free throws is gonna be essential here. Hannon with pace. But then he throws it away, but then it is thrown away by Vic. Picked up by Ellis, 145 in the quarter. Ellis has lit a fuse here, let's see if he gets another jump shot again. Oh, if he'd have hit that, the place was about to explode. You could hear the Westville fans gasp yeah, he's, with the move that he made and then the step back. Yeah, he snatched it back, and he was able to go up with it. He's playing with tremendous confidence right now. Ballas should have took that shot. He's going to go with the runner. No, can't get it to fall, but he's fouled. Ketchmark wanted to go up, but found himself too far under the basket. Didn't panic. Brought it out, and when he brought it out, I thought that's when Ballas had the jumper. Yeah, and that's the thing. You're not going to see a Kevin Duzan coach team panic very often, if ever. And even with Ellis playing as outstanding as he has so far, we have an opportunity here to tie it with less than 90 seconds to go in the first period. So, But could not. One of two for Ballas. It's 14-13. Sam Bovard entered the game after the first free throw. Yeah, so credit to the scouts team being able to play with composure. It's back and forth right now. This is an outstanding start to our championship game. Well, here's Hannon with it. We approach the one minute mark here in the first quarter. Pepper with it, he's gonna shoot the long three in and out. He made, he made his first shot attempt there, the first basket of the game from that same spot. Drop up the floor, tries to get the shot at the rim. It's blocked by Kenny Pepper. Kenny Pepper sends it into the second row, but mind you, he blocked that ball from near the rim. An outstanding swat and great job at protecting the rim in transition. So it'll be picked. It'll trigger the inbounds pass. That's a tough spot right there to inbound the ball, but he does get it into Croft. Croft gives it up to Ballas. Ballas goes down low inside Vic. Kick out. Baker's got a three look. He won't take it. Catch mark with it. 
35 seconds. Vic able to get a good post up there on Baker. He catches it near the elbow there with his back to the basket. Watch out for Vic. He can create and score from those elbows and from the low block. Catch mark. Ballas, we're down 18 seconds. Run. I thought it was a run. No, it was a pass to catch mark who scores. Outstanding alley -oop. Catch mark on the finish. We got ourselves a 15-14 ball game with eight seconds to play in the first quarter. Ellis, that back, he traveled. He wanted to drive, so he picked up the dribble because he was going to pull up, then recognized if I step back, I got a shot, but he had already stopped the dribble. It's a travel call. Yeah, with a guy as lethal as he is in the mid-range, when it comes to creating difficult shots, you'll see calls like that. Catch mark to the basket, scores it at the horn! Nobody picked him up on the inbounds, and he was able to take it all the way to the rim and score it to end the first quarter. After eight, count 17, Westville 14. You're watching Game Night in the PCC on the PCS channel. Did you know? Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strike and Van Till, now you know. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. You're watching Game Night in the PCC on the PCS channel. It's the 2022 Porter County Conference Tournament presented by Berkey Family Farms and Couch. Berkey Family Farms, more than just a farm, visit berkeyfarms.com or call 219-766-3851. Berkey Family Farms and Couch. And that three was scored by, so it's finishing the read. David down there, who got that three? Julian Ellis taking it hard to the basket. Draws a blocking foul there. So blocking foul. Yeah, so after one, folks, both teams actually were shooting exactly 6 of 11. So 54.5% field goal percentage for both teams. Exactly 6 for 11 after the end of one. The inbounds pass at the backboard. Then laid loose on the floor, picking up and scoring Sam Bovard. It's not often that you get a hockey assist after you pass it to the backboard. Backboard with an excellent assist there to Baker. How do the Iowa Browns underneath? Here's Ballas. Vic. Croft. Ballas. Baker. Ballas had that jumper from 17. Yeah, but he didn't want to fire that with Kenny Pepper right there. Yeah, Kenny was... Pepper, outstanding defender. A lot of length, especially hard to get a shot off him in the paint. Baker takes it against Ellis, has to give it up. Oh. And there's a quick hands and steal by Hannon. Going to take it against Croft with the left hand, left it short. Baker able to save it on the baseline to Vic. Baker gets it back. Here comes Couts. And then there's Pepper stealing it. Pepper to the basket. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Kenny Pepper. So Kenny Pepper in transition, pinned that ball to his, uh, with his right arm to his shoulder, used his left to extend. That's what the official saw that. Mind you, Eubank perhaps is letting him know, hey, say, look, he came in right underneath him. He has a right to the basket. He's going up with a shot. That's probably the conversation they're having. Regardless, folks, it's a charge. Either way, you spin it. Larry, what do you think on that call? I'll be honest. I looked away from it to do something on the, on the screen, so I didn't see 100% what happened. The spin move. Runner up and good, Aaron. Catch mark. 
the big basket by Catchmark, and Hannon's gonna play with pace now. Hannon goes to the corner. That's Husky with it, now back to Hannon. Hannon gonna pull up and take a three, hits it! Gavin Hannon! Big three there by the Blackhawks. There are two of four from the in the first quarter from three, make them now three of five in this first half. Pass, catch Mark had to save it. This was knocked away from him. Gives it up to Croft. Cabalas. Croft. And Baker. 22 19 Mustangs, 5 15 remaining in the first half. Bounce pass to the inside to Vic. Vic, kick out. Ballas. Didn't like what he saw, so he went to try to pass it. There's the quick hands. The feet of Ellis, knocking that one out of bounds. Back into the game, Caden Pepper for Westville. And out of the ball game goes Sam Bovart. So in a three-point game, you see Westville, they have both they have both Caden and Kenny Pepper in the game, along with Julian Ellis. Hannon doing an outside an outstanding job of playing defense. He was facilitating earlier. So, so now that you have Kenny and Caden in here. Kenny hit a three in that right corner. Caden on a pick and roll, missed an opportunity there. We'll see if they go to that. But also, let's not forget, Andrew Husky's in this game too. And he was a guy who was finishing it out in the semifinal. Alley oop, we are going to get an offensive foul away from the ball on the screen. Joe Vick is going to pick it up, his first team second. Here's Hannon, going to bring it up on the dribble. Gives it up, Kenny Pepper to the basket. Offensive foul, Kenny Pepper. Larry, what's the hardest call as an official? It's a block charge, right? Absolutely it is. Any thoughts on that one? Uh, I, I honestly thought it was a good call. I thought he pushed off with that off arm. Okay, so that's twice he's done that now. So we'll see, if, we'll see what happens moving forward here. Westville's going to take a full timeout. We'll take it with them. 441 remaining first half. It is counts 22. Westville 19. You're watching Game Night in the PCC on the PCS channel. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at teamblythes.com, where the athlete shops. Stay with us after the game as we'll name the Regent Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game, brought to you by Regent Sports Network, the only game in town. Welcome back as Berkey Family Farms and Couch presents Game Night in the BCC on the PCS channel. It's the 2022 PCC Tournament right here on the Region Sports Network, Berkeley Family Farms, where you'll find a county market, bakery, coffee house, restaurant, ice cream parlor, and more. Check out berkeyfarms.com. So 22 to 19, <coughs> Couts leads Westville. 441 remaining, Couts has the basketball. There's Baker. Down low, Vic to turn around. Blocked against the board by Pepper. Very good job by both Peppers there. With that that field goal is going to count. Yep. It's going to be called as goaltending. Give the basket to Matt Baker. Okay, yeah, I, I guess from my vantage point, it, lo it looked like it was still kind of at the apex, perhaps. I didn't know if it was necessarily coming down. Regardless, a huge athletic play there by Pepper, but the basket counts after the ruling by the official. Hannon dribbles the baseline, gives it up to Kenny Pepper. He goes into the lane. It's off the back of the iron too strong. And that's Baker with the rebound up the floor quickly. Catch mark. <clears throat> Ballas to the basket. Can't get it to fall. <clears throat> Pepper with the board. Ellis bringing it the other way for Westville. The floater, runner, whatever you want to call it. It's a basket for Julian Ellis. Julian Ellis is just so good at changing speeds. He's had a dead <laughs> sprint at half court 
and still pretty much so at a three-point line, but able to slow it down, take his, his step right there, float it up for good. That's it. He had nine in the first quarter, another basket here for him. There's a shot there by Caden Pepper. Springs hand in the other way, his shot blocked by Baker. Put back up, that's no good. Pepper with it, he got a whistle to foul. Caden Pepper, not only did he get the block there, but he gave it an extra tap to get it to Hannon to initiate the fast break. A very heady play there by Caden Pepper. Only a sophomore, 6'4", playing sensational there on the defensive end. Connor Croft, his first foul, team's third. So we're down to 320 left in the first half. This is Ellis with it, little crossover dribble. Takes it to the basket, can't get it to fall. And Ketchmark comes out of there with it. He'll slow it down and give it up to Croft. 24-21, Couts in the lead. Again, Couts trying to win the PCC title for a fourth straight season. Baker, Ketchmark right now, top of the key. Baker wasn't looking for the pass. Ketchmark saw him open as he was cutting across the lane, but Baker didn't realize it. Yeah, it, you know, at the same time, though, that pass wasn't the most accurate it could have been. But, it, yeah, you're right, though. He didn't finish his cut, perhaps. I don't know if he was trying to get the ball on that in that short corner, if he was trying to go all the way to the wing. Regardless, a turnover there, and that's not something you want to see because that's an unforced error. And even if that pass is caught, I don't know that he's in a great position to get a shot yeah, up anyway. Yeah, I, I don't think he anticipated that the pass would come because of his positioning at the time it was thrown. Hannon with it now on the right side. He's going to use the left-handed dribble, drive the runner off the iron, no good, Croft the board. 2.20 remaining in the first half. Croft going to bring it up the court. It's a little bit of a screen, try to separate himself from Hannon. Hannon playing terrific defense, making Croft work. Croft has it stolen by Ellis. Baker's going to try and get in the way a little bit. Ellis can't get it to score. Baker's going to get the foul. Outstanding job by Hannon, but a tremendous job by Croft with great ball handling skills there, wizardry perhaps, but once he gets so deep into the into the basket area, he's unable to maintain that. As you see, you know, uh, I, I believe it was Caden Pepper or Kenny Pepper that was able to kind of poke that ball loose and initiate the break with Julian Ellis, and he's at the line right now. Ellis hits the first. Jafith and Weiler into the game for Couts as Matthew Baker will sit down with his two fouls. One more coming for Ellis. Trains it, we have a one point game. 24, 23, two minutes left in the first half. Vic with it, jumper. Bounces around, won't go down, Ellis the board. Into the front court, Ellis gets the man in the air, throws it up, won't go, and there's Ketchmark with the rebound. He's gonna bring it quickly the other way. He sees space, what a drive, and the end, and score it, Aaron Ketchmark. Aaron Ketchmark, outstanding job in transition. These Mustangs love to run. Here's Pepper, hits it, Kenny Pepper. 26-25 is the team's trade baskets, 115 remaining first half. Kenny Pepper, not only a force on the interior on the defensive end, but showing some shooting touch here. He had a three earlier on the right side of the floor. Nice midi there. Love to see it for the Blackhawks. Croft for three, that's off the iron, no good. And that's Kenny Pepper with the board. Gives it to Ellis, who gives it to Hannon, and we're in the final minute of the first half. Ellis starting on the left side of the floor here. He's done all of his scoring, though, on the right side of the floor or at the rim. We'll see what happens here, what kind of offense we'll see. Cannon finding some space, taking it to the basket. Can't get the runner to fall. Vic comes down with it to catch mark to the corner. Croft, good look from three, buries it. Aaron Ketchmark is so great in the open floor. Facilitating, scoring, this time getting Connor Croft for a corner three. 12 on four trays for Croft in the first half. 15 seconds left. Ellis, Ellis says, I'm gonna take this by myself. Goes behind the back, at the elbow right side, leaves it short. Vic with the rebound. 
Croft quickly the other way. Going to take it to the hole. Can't get it to fall, but he's fouled. The foul on Gavin Hannon, his third. Croft at the line with 1.4 on the clock to shoot two. First free throw up and no good. Croft will get another. Second free throw up and that is good. Thrown the length of the floor, no good. We are at halftime. 16 minutes in the book in the 2022 Boys PCC title game. It's counts 30, Westville 25. You're watching game night in the PCC on the PCS channel. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. Oh, welcome back to the Porter County Conference Boys Championship game. We are at halftime, and right now we are watching the championship dance team from Hebron perform. They uh, are the Porter County Conference champion, so let's tune in and watch them perform. The Hebron Hawks dance team, the championship dance team of the 2022 Porter County Conference. They are going to recognize here the uh, dance all-conference team here shortly, and we will bring that to you live. Are you are you the Westfield dance coach or? I'm the Westfield cheer coach. Is there?
Right now you see Hebron being presented with their championship plaque, the dance team. And a nice performance by those ladies and a really good job on that routine. A little Halloween theme, uh, witch theme, I guess. Some Beetlejuice in there, some uh, Night Before Christmas. What? It's a good theme. Should you do what? And now we're going to recognize there, the Why Dance All Conference the team. Camera? Starting with Boone Grove. We have Kaya Davis and Nikki Mangus. From Hebron, you'll have Alea Boone and Cheyenne Fisher. From Couch, you'll have Shelby Whitler and Bailey McLean. From lacrosse, you'll have Lily Cox and Jordan Pryor. From Morgan Township, you'll have Katie Chapman and Caitlin Stavitsky. From South Central, the Sarah Shea and Piper Wade. Washington Township, Ava Vogel and Addison DeHaven. And finally from Westville, Grace Phillips and Elson Garbarczyk. And that is your 2022 Porter County Conference All-Conference Dance Team. Thank you for that, Larry. Halftime here of the boys' championship game of the Porter County Conference Tournament. Couts leads Westville 30-25. to Let's take a quick look at some of the numbers. For Couts, Connor Croft leads the way with 13 points. He hit four trays in that opening half. Aaron Ketchmark with five field goals for 10 points. Tristan Ballas has five, and Joe Vick has two for Westville. Julian Ellis with 13 points, and he's done it all kinds of ways, from jump shot to the rim, three-pointers. He leads all, while well, he's tied with Croft, leading all scorers in the game. Uh, Kenny Pepper has five. Gavin Hannon has three. Cody Brooks and Sam Bovard, two points apiece. 
shooting numbers in the first half for Couts, 11 of 20 for 55% from the floor. Four of nine for three from 44% and four of six from the free throw line for 67%. For Westville, 10 of 24, 42%, three of five from three for 60% and two of two for the free throw line for 100%. And now let's throw it down to the court. And to Mike, Hello, send ladies it and down. gentlemen, I'm with Coach Robin Marcus of the dance and cheer team over at Westville High School. Robin, how has it been preparing for a tournament like this? Oh, it's crazy. Um, we have lots of days of practice, and then plus COVID, we've had girls that were quarantined and had to change the routine numerous times. So we were lucky to come away with a cheer win. So we were really proud. Congratulations on that. And you also had some of your members uh, recognized for all conference. Yes, um, two of my seniors, Allison Grabarzik and Grace Phillips, both were honored as all-conference for our dance. And then I had two for cheer also. Um, Samantha Wright, who wasn't here with us this evening, and Emily O'Dell, they're both amazing kids. Awesome, awesome. And how, how incredible is it that your dance and cheer team are performing at the halftime of the championship game for the 99th anniversary of the PCC Boys Tournament? It is amazing. It's so much fun. And these kids just really missed this atmosphere last year. We were lucky to have the tournament, but without all the people, it's just not the same. As a spirit person, um, we live for days with the gyms packed, so it's great. Awesome. Thank you for your time, Coach. Thank you. It was very nice. Thank you. Back to you guys. Terrific job, Mike. Thank you very much. A couple of numbers that I wanted to go through before we finished up. Looking at foul trouble for Westville. Gannon Hand and their point guard has three personals. Kenny and Caden Pepper, the brothers, have two apiece. The only young man in foul trouble for Couch, Matt Baker, has two. So there you have it, 30 to 25. Couch leading Westville at the half. Let's take a break. We'll be back with second half action after this. You're watching game night in the PCC on the PCS channel. Since 1919, farming has truly been a Berkey family calling for generations. But it's not just a farm. There is much more for families to enjoy. The county market, with freezers full of homemade, home-raised products. The bakery, where pastries, donuts, and more are made daily. The coffee shop, with local roasted hot and cold coffee and espresso drinks. The restaurant and ice cream parlor. Stop in, you won't be disappointed. Berkey Family Farms, 205 South Main Street in Coutts, and on the web at berkeyfarms.com. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean to cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strike and Van Till, now you know. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at teamblythe's.com, where the athlete shops. 
Along with Mike Jamia and Larry Babcock, I'm Jerry Siska back with you here at Couts High School. You're watching Game Night in the PCC on the PCS channel. It's the 2022 Porter County Conference Tournament presented by Berkey Family Farms and Couts. Berkey Family Farms, generations of family traditions since 1919. Visit BerkeyFarms.com to find out more. We do want to remind you before we begin this third quarter that this broadcast of PCC Basketball is a production of the PCS channel and is distributed by the Region Sports Network. Any other use, duplication, reproduction, or retransmission of the accounts and descriptions of this contest without the express written consent of the Region Sports Network is prohibited. So it will be Westville Basketball to begin the third quarter. Brooks, Hannon, Ellis, Pepper and Pepper, the original starting five for Westville. Baker, Croft, Vic, Ballas and Ketchmark, the original starting five for Couts. There's Ellis with the jumper, no good. Knocked out of bounds, it'll go to Couts. Got ourselves a close one here to start the second half. Folks, if you were tuning in earlier, this Westville team boot Beat, beat, bleh, beats Boone Grove today, 59 to 56, but they outscored them 22 to nine in the second quarter. So lighting a fuse was Julian Ellis early. We'll see if this Westville team can go on a scoring run here in the third or fourth. Catch mark, kicks it to the corner to Baker, who misses the three. Caden Peppers with the rebound. Ellis sloppy on the dribble, lost the handle on the ball. Battle for the loose ball to tie up, but we're gonna get a jump ball. No surprise that Ballas was down there for the loose ball. Such a gritty player, blue collar type of guy. I saw how you tied that in. Yeah, a little bit of foreshadowing yeah, for the folks at home, you, you know? Looked like he hit his funny bone on that elbow on the floor, and trust me, if you've ever done it, everybody who has knows there's nothing funny about it. He looks okay. We're back to action. Here's Croft. Jumper Vic, good. Joe Vic with the field goal. Yeah, Joe Vic's one of those guys where he can get it done uh, anywhere around that painted area, whether it be at the free throw line, elbow, or lower block. Pepper tries to go bank it, I believe, but left it short to do that and shot it too strong to shoot it straight in. Counts with the board. They're working offensively with their biggest lead of the night at 7, 32 yeah, catch to 25. Mark, yeah, Catchmark was really calling for that ball underneath the basket, but Croft wasn't seeing the basket area there. You see good action here, good ball reversal by Croft the underneath Mustangs. to Baker for the field goal. Great cut by Baker, great find, great basket. 34-25 in the third quarter. Backside screen, good cut by Baker, good see by Croft in the pass. Nine point lead, counts, six minutes to go, third quarter. Pass inside. Caden Pepper misses the shot, but he's fouled. That was a good look there by Hannon and a good feed. Yeah, Hannon's done an outstanding job of seeing the floor, and he's been getting the ball quickly, which is very, very important here, mind you. So it's one thing to get the ball to the, the right guy, but getting it to the guy with the right timing is everything. So by, a, by getting that pass as quick as he did, and with Caden Pepper meeting the ball there, he was in the best position he possibly could be, and he has earned himself a trip to the line, that being said. Andrew Husky comes in. Cody Brooks has a seat. Second free throw, good. So Pepper hits them both. The foul was on Aaron Ketchmark, his first. Team's first of the second half. 34-27 now. Baker with the basketball. Trying to get away from Ellis. Tries to go alley-oop. Able to get the pass completed to catch Mark for the score. Great touch pass there. Just beyond the outstretched hands of the defender. Hannon just going to pull up and hit it. Hannon was looking to pass it, but nobody came up to stop him. So he's like, okay, I'll just shoot this. Well, he had room. He had breathing room there. And he was able. He knew he'd be able to get the shot off in time. But the fact that he connected it is such a huge basket right now in the third quarter. Here's Ballas, the left hand, kicks it. Vic wants a jump or two, strong. But there on the weak side, catch mark with the board. Croft with the runner, he tries to go off glass. There's Vic, excuse me, catch mark again with the rebound put back. He's fouled but knocked to the floor. 
And Andrew Husky is going to pick up the foul. His first, team's first. And Aaron Ketchmark is going to go to the line to shoot two. Aaron Ketchmark surrounded by three Westville Blackhawks, but it doesn't matter as he's able to high point that ball, get that rebound, and go back, right back up with it. First free throw, no good. Ketchmark will get another. Free throws are going to be key here in the second half. That is something to be looking for for you folks at home. Second free throw rolls around and down. Soft touch gets it to go. 37-29. Eight-point lead. Mustangs. Ellis with it. Ellis says, I'm going to work here. Puts it off the glass. Good. Julian Ellis. That's just a strong take. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Just go right at the chest of the defender, putting him on the ground, and getting the basket in the hoop. Baker with it. Baker to the basket, puts it up and scores. It was actually a good defensive job there by Husky to make him turn, but he found a way to get the ball to the basket. Husky wants a three look, right corner drains it. Big three by Husky to get this to a five point ball game now with four and a half minutes left in the third period. And we've got an offensive foul away from the basketball. That's going to be Aaron Ketchmark, his second team second. I wonder what Coach Eubank wants here. I don't know if he wants a set. All he knows is that he's 3-3 three and three in PCC turning games, and he's looking for his first title tonight. Ellis goes between the legs. Gets a little screen from Pepper, but couldn't find room. To Hannon, to Pepper, shot up. That's no good. Kenny Pepper gets his own board. Can't find anybody, so he gives it up to Hannon. Couldn't find space to shoot. Got Hannon. Hannon takes it to the bucket. Can't get the shot to fall. Baker was able to rebound it, but it was knocked out of his hands from behind. Ellis for three. Julian Ellis. A big three for Ellis, but that was all created by Andrew Husky being able to poke that ball away underneath the basket. And we've gone from a nine-point counts lead down to two here in the last couple of minutes. Ketchmark to the bucket off the glass. <laughs> Strong move there, Aaron Ketchmark. An incredible finisher when he's able to get going and towards the basket. Aaron Ketchmark. Ellis. He's just going to fire it from my watch out town. I'll have another. Ellis. That was impressive right there. Both those baskets were right with a defender right on him. Those, that was impressive. It's a one-point game, Mustang Lee. Croft got handed in the air but still didn't have a shot he liked. So he gives it up to Vic. Swings around Baker. Under three minutes to play. Catch Mark Eck bounces in and out. The rebound went to Vic, but he had it stripped by Ellis. All eyes on Ellis here, as it seems like he's lighting the fuse again this time in the second half. Hannon with it. Ellis. Wanted to go inside, didn't get it far enough to Peppers. Good read and catch and steal Ketchmark. And he's going to be fouled, dribbling it up the floor. Great interception by Aaron Ketchmark. He's in great defensive position as he's fronting the post and then able just to intercept that ball with his left hand, bring it to his chest, and then go out with it. Outstanding job by Aaron Ketchmark. Anytime he gets the ball, it, whether it be a steal or receiving an outlet pass, he's always looking to run. Andrew Husky picks up the foul, his second team second. And Jafeet Anweiler into the game for Couch. Here's a turnover. Here's Kenny Pepper. Lost the handle on it. Out of bounds. It'll go back to Couch. Yeah, Vic wasn't looking at the basketball. It bounces off him. Thankfully, Kenny Pepper, well, thankful for the Couch faithful, Kenny Pepper was unable to finish in transition there as he has the ball just go right out of bounds. Catch mark on the dribble. There's Ballas. Baker. Anweiler. Down on the low post. Catch mark, kick out, Vic, got it. Joe Vic, that's good ball movement by the Couts offense. Going inside, out, and then back to the top and getting the score. Here's his turnover. Baker, Enweiler, corner, 
Baker thought about the three, found Edweiler open, but Pepper noticed he was and stepped over and stole the pass. Yeah, and you don't want to make that pass there to Anweiler because let's say Anweiler gets that ball cleanly down there, he's probably not going to be able to go up with it right away. You want to maintain possession. You want to value the basketball here in the second half. Ellis takes it to the glass, left it short. Baker's got the board, sends it up floor. Enweiler gives it up nicely to catch Mark. Enweiler knew he could not get that shot off. Waited for the defender to commit and then got it to catch Mark for the field goal. Yeah, Ann Weiler with the head fake, able to drop it down for an assist. It was a thing of beauty. Ballas to the goal, can't get it to fall. Kenny Pepper with it, 45-40 counts, final minute, third quarter. Ellis going to slow it down a little. Here's Hannon. Caden Pepper. Westville going to be content to play for the final shot, you think, Mike? I don't think so. I oh, think there's Ellis for three. <laughs> that was a terrific box out by Ballas. That truly was. And he had to really work to hold it. And Weiler to Baker. Catch mark. 25 seconds. We'll see what Kevin with, with what coach Kevin Duzan wants here from his Mustangs. 15 seconds. Baker, he goes down low. Catch mark had it knocked away. Enweiler, Baker for three. No. Ellis with the board. He's got time to get up the floor. Four, three. Ellis gonna fire a three. No good. And that's the end of the third quarter. The score counts 45. Westville, 40. You're watching game night in the PCC on the PCS channel. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. Since 1919, farming has truly been a Berkey family calling for generations. But it's not just a farm. There is much more for families to enjoy. The county market, with freezers full of homemade, home-raised products. The bakery, where pastries, donuts, and more are made daily. The coffee shop, with local roasted hot and cold coffee and espresso drinks. The restaurant and ice cream parlor. Stop in, you won't be disappointed. Berkey Family Farms, 205 South Main Street in Couts, and on the web at berkeyfarms.com. Welcome back as Berkey Family Farms in Couts presents Game Night in the PCC on the Porter County Sports Channel. It's coverage of the 2022 Porter County Conference Tournament right here on the Region Sports Network. Berkey Family Farms, more than just a farm. Visit berkeyfarms.com or call 219 219- 766-3851, Berkey Family Farms in Couts. So we get set to begin the fourth quarter. It'll be Westville basketball. They trail by five. Each team with 15 points in that third quarter. Hannon with it. Kenny Pepper with five points. He gets the ball to Hannon. He also has five points. Down low, Kenny Pepper working. Shot left it short, and Kenny Pepper knocked it out of bounds. It'll go to Couch. That's a good effort by Pepper to be able to knock that ball out of bounds because you know if Vic gets that ball, he's getting it to Croft, and they are going and running. Croft going to walk it up right now. Hannon waiting for him at the half-court line. Vic with it. Ballas and Baker. Catch mark. Ballas, left elbow, Ballas gives up the dribble, so he gets it to Vic, jumper, no, that's too strong. Catch mark able to tap it, but Vic can't save it over in front of the scorer's table to go to West, Westville. No, that's another good look for Vic there as he was wide open for that mid-range jump shot, didn't connect, but he's, he's knocked that shot down time and time again in this tournament, in this game, so that's a good look. Catch mark has 17 points as well as Croft with 13. Those are key guys to look at here in the fourth quarter as well as the free throw shooting. Which we see Westville's four for four from the line 
Oh, getting wide open is Caden Pepper on a backdoor cut. He scores on the assist from Gavin Hannon. 45-42, 6.45 remaining. Quick release, catch mark off the back of the iron, off the top of the backboard. Caden Pepper with it to Hannon. Hannon giving it up to Kenny Pepper. Too far underneath, can't get it to go. But that's going to be Joe Vick on the foul. Yeah, good job by Kenny Pepper to get that shot off as he was, you know, his momentum was going to the baseline and out of bounds, able to get that shot off, able to draw some contact, get to the line like I mentioned. Westville is four for four from the free throw line. And 30. Kautz is five for eight, 62 and a half percent. That uh, foul is on Joe Vick, his second, team's third. Kautz took a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. Foul, uh, Kautz took a 30 second timeout. So taking a look at the timeouts, at least what I have, I have both squads with four. I have Couch with a 30 and three fulls, and I have Westville with two of each. That's valuable information here in the fourth quarter. What, what we're seeing right now, folks, is the student sections are going absolutely bananas. Uh, I got my eyes on the keg. One thing to note, by the way, with the keg, so in the event that Couch wins, they will obviously retain the keg. If Westville wins, they will get it, and they will be able to paint it their colors. But regardless of whoever wins, Boone Grove will get their, will get the next shot at the keg, either it be on January 28th at Couts or whether it be if Westville wins tonight, February 8th at Boone. So we got a championship of the line as well as the keg. Kenny Pepper hits the first free throw. Another one coming for Pepper. Good. They're perfect at the line. Six for six. 45-44 ball game here in the fourth quarter. Six and a half minutes remaining. Connor Croft with it. Gives it up. Baker has it left side. Nothing down low, even though he faked the pass there. Vic, Croft, run to shoot, but good recovery by Hannon. He couldn't. Baker here on the left side. Husky on him. Catch mark at the top. Croft. Down low, Vic. Catch mark in the corner, or Baker in the corner. Now to Croft. Croft going to take it all the way to the basket and score it. Connor Croft. Connor Croft with a tough basket there. A lot of people are yelling for a travel, but regardless, it's a three point game now. Ellis up, can't score it, put a whistle and a foul. And Aaron Ketchmark picks up the foul, his third. So Julian Ellis to the line to shoot two. Free throws, good. We talked about it. Free throws will win championships, and Westville has done a really nice job hitting their free throws. Yeah, they're 7-7 seven seven from the line tonight. Second one for Ellis. Good. Make it 8-8. Eight for 47-46. Eight. Back to a one-point game. Couch with the lead. Five and a half minutes. Baker. Vic, Croft. Croft has the ball knocked away by Hannon. He's able to come up with it. Croft reaches in and commits the foul. Frustration foul there by Connor Croft, and that'll be his second. Perhaps that's what happens when you're struck by electricity. An outstanding play by Hannon. And such an electric player. And it's one of those things where you get the ball ripped from you. He's going looking for a transition basket. You make a foul, but this place is rocking but now you can hear a pin drop here as this is probably the most important possession of the game for the Blackhawks up to this point. That's five team fouls on Couch. Mock! Rejected by Ketchmark! Kenny Pepper tried to score Ketchmark with the block down the other way and that is Connor Croft with the field goal. Hannon scores! He answers! Runner. Sustained two-way action. 
49-48, we're under five minutes to play. PCC tournament title on the line. Vick, Croft, down low, catch mark, catch mark, his pass stolen by Hannon. Hannon goes the other way, lost the handle on it as he couldn't decide whether to stutter step, take it to the basket, or pull up for a jumper, and he lost the handle on it. Yeah, so Hannon's made it look easy all night, the way he's a wizard with the basketball, but coming down the floor at a breakneck pace, trying to break down your defender with a hesitation there, and he loses the basketball. But folks, I'm telling you something right now, what this player's been doing has been uncommon, but he makes it look common. He does, so an outstanding job by him, but another seal for him regardless. And that's what you're gonna need here is you're gonna need a heightened intensity on defense in order to create opportunities against this Cowboys team. Westfield takes a full timeout. We'll take one with them. 432 remaining, 49-48, Mustang. You're watching game. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Stay with us after the game when we'll name the play of the game presented by IKORCC. Training, professionalism, and partnerships for economic development. Learn more at IKORCC. Dot com. You're watching Game Night in the PCC on the PCS channel. The 2022 Porter County Conference Tournament presented by Berkey Family Farms in Couch. Berkey Family Farms generations of family tradition since 1919. BerkeyFarms.com. That's where you can go to find out more. 49-48 Mustangs. 432 remaining in this one. And it has been a good one. Counts with the basketball. Croft on the dribble up. Baker with it. Nothing down low, so he brings it to the top. Vic. Croft. Catch mark. Catch mark got poked in the eye when he made his spin move with the ball. We're going to get a stoppage in play. Hoping that catch mark's all right. Catch mark has been sensational. Coming into tonight's game, he has led Couch with 35 points in the first two games of the tournament. Catch mark had 17 coming into this fourth quarter. In this fourth quarter, he hasn't just been scoring, but he's also been facilitating an incredibly important basket uh, recently based off an assist from catch mark to Croft. We see that he's okay and will continue. The ball comes into Croft. That's Ballas on the right side. The catch mark. The Croft down inside. Vic. And Vic was able to get around Caden Pepper, get the pass. Pump fake went up. You couldn't score it, but Caden Pepper going to pick up his third. Yeah, Vic is so good down on the block. He's, I mean, on the, at the elbow, he's good everywhere, truthfully, within the three-point arc. But being able to be patient and drawing that foul, getting yourself to the line, Getting a little stoppage here in play for some free points, hopefully, for the Mustangs. Vic's first free throw, good. The power of the keg is the keg is staring down Vic at the line. Big free throws here. Thankfully, shooting in front of his student section as opposed to the opposing student section here in the second half. Second free throw, good. He hit them both. <laughs> Count seven of ten at the line in this one. 51-48, a three-point advantage for the home team. Here's Ellis. Couldn't find anything after the gives up the dribble and the spin move. Pepper gives it back to Ellis. Another spin move goes to the glass, and he's fouled. <coughs> Excuse me. Fouls on 22, Aaron Ketchmark, and that's his fourth. Team sixth. So Ellis is going to go to the line to shoot two. But also, 
with that being the sixth team foul on Couts. Westville's going to be shooting throws the rest of the game. We have three and a half minutes remaining in it. First one by Ellis. Good. And Ketchmark with his four fouls going to stay on the floor. Only three fouls against Westville in this second half. Ellis second free throw. Good. Julian Ellis has been sensational tonight. 25 points I have him for. Here's Ballas. Catch mark. Croft. Vic. Baker. So everybody's touched it on this possession. Typical of a Kevin Duzan team. It's won three PCC championships in a row here. Looking for his fourth. In about three minutes, we'll see if this one stays in regulation. Or one ends point, in regulation. One point game. Counts with the ball in the lead. Catch Mark at the free throw line. Can't get it to fall. Rebound comes down to Hannon. He's going to race it the other way. It's going one against three. Going to kick it out. Ellis. Ellis, little stutter move. Takes it to the hole off the glass. That won't fall. Great job by the board. El Great job by Ellis filling that lane in transition as he goes straight to the corner. But then he had to move and he was getting the attention of Hannon to get in that window to get his attention. He has an opportunity there. They don't come down with it. But you want to see that in transition, filling those lanes properly. Croft with the basketball. 2.15 remaining. Dallas thought about it. Baker with it. 51-50 counts. Ballas. Pepper comes up to make him do something. He finally does and gives it off to Croft. 152 remaining. Yeah, Pepper playing a little bit off Ballas when he has Vic behind him. They do, do not want to allow Vic to catch it. They'd rather shoot Ball they'd rather have Ballas shoot that three and get a shot contest. Catch mark, spin move, goes into the lane. And he's fouled on the floor. So there'll be no free throws as that'll be the fourth team foul against Westville. And it's going on Julian Ellis, his second. So out of bounds under their own basket for the Mustangs. Croft brings it in. The catch mark who can't score it. Gets his own rebound. It's on the floor. Players from both teams scrambling for it and Westville comes up with it, but we've got a whistle and a timeout called by Westville. It'll be a 30-second timeout. That's all they have left, 30s. Coach Eubank with an awesome job of getting that timeout call. He's running the center. He's running darn near to center court as he gets the attention of the official. But make no mistake about it. Ellis down there hitting the deck. He's on the ground. He actually get it, gained possession of it, was able to get it to Pepper, and they get the timeout. Coach Eubank doing an awesome, outstanding job tonight as he's trying to get his first PCC title. 129 remaining. 51 50 counts. Hope you've been with us all evening. Thank you and glad you're with us right now. This has been a very good and entertaining basketball game. That it has. It's been an instant classic, to be honest with you. An instant classic. So a reset on the fouls. Couch has six, so Westville will be shooting free throws on every foul. Westville only has four, so Couch will not be going to the line unless it's a shooting foul. Foul trouble, Aaron Ketchmark for the Mustangs. He has four. Caden Pepper with three, and Gannon Hannon with three for Westville. Hannon's played this whole second half with three. Yeah, he has, and he's out, done an outstanding job because he has not wavered once while being on defense. He's been active hands, he's been getting steals, he's been running hard, he's been doing everything that he's supposed to be doing, regardless of the three fouls that he has. Comes into Ellis as uh, Husky had a lot of difficulty trying to find somewhere to inbound the ball. Yeah, that's a dangerous pass there. You don't ever want to throw it from one side of the floor to the other, out of bounds underneath to inbound. Well, here's Hannon with it. Double screen to see where he can go. Gives it up to Husky in the right corner. 
Husky through the lane, has it blocked by Baker, but Baker gonna be whistled for the foul and Husky gonna shoot a couple. Husky doing an outstanding job of getting to the middle of the paint, but then turning the, uh, turning the corner so quickly and then switching hands to get it to his left to draw that foul there by Baker. So he'll be shooting two at the line. Third, team, third personal foul on Baker, seventh team on Couts. First free throw by Husky, good. Front of the rim, backboard, more rim, down. Free throws win championships, boys. They are 11 for 11, and that one ties it at 51. Second free throw. We are tied with a minute five left as the second one off the iron for Husky. That just like this afternoon, wasn't it late in the fourth quarter before they missed their first one, Westville? Yeah, that same thing in the first, uh, first game that they played this morning. So Couts takes the timeout. Couts timeout. It's a full. We'll take it with him. 58 seconds left. No, we're going to leave it right here. Okay, everybody calm down. We'll, we'll keep it right here. Uh, oh, my goodness. You, you, I was hey. afraid I was going to have to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth on Nathan or something from a heart attack. You, you see, It'll all be fine. You, you, see, you see what happens when the big guy takes over? Everything gets a little excited in the booth. Everybody, oh, got, guys, calm, cool, and collected. We're going to keep it here. You both can't go quiet out of me now. <laughs> you no, why not? <laughs> yeah, speaking of calm, cool, collected, under 60 seconds here, 58.8 to be exact, and that's going to what both teams are going to have to do. We talk about fundamentals in the pregame. We talk about fundamentals all the time. But being fundamental under pressure is when it matters most. And true fundamentals, being truly a fundamental basketball player, is when you can do it under pressure. That's when you become exposed. If you're not a fundamental basketball player, when pressure is applied, it shows. And this has been an outstanding game. We have Julian Ellis now with 25 points. He's been leading his team in scoring. He's been doing everything he could do. But Couts has it here, and the Mustangs will bring it up in a tie game with 55 seconds down and counting. Well, here's Crop with the basketball. Vic. Vic. Hannon's going to commit the foul. That'll be four on Gavin Hannon. Went to slap from high on the basketball. That's what the official said. He caught his arm. Vic well, to trigger the inbound. Westfield still got a couple to give here, so. That was only the fifth team foul on the Blackhawks. Comes into Baker. Great defense by Husky. He's given outstanding minutes here in the second half. Vic. Catch mark. Catch mark. It's knocked away by Ellis, but catch mark able to get it back. Goes to Baker to catch mark to the goal. Won't go, and it's an offensive foul. And that's foul number five on Aaron Catchmark. Jeff Peppers, that's down for Westville. Slow to get up. What a sequence. For a second, people thought that catch mark went over and back. The official says that the ball was deflected. Catch mark kicks it. He gets it in the paint, goes up. And with the offensive foul, that's his fifth. And he's out of the ball game with 29 seconds to go. So Jafif and Weiler back into the game for Couts. That's a huge call right there. What'd you think, Larry? Yeah. Again, we've talked about that's the hardest call it, in basketball. It, it is, and uh, again, from our position upstairs, it's really hard for me to even say anything about that call because I we have a totally different look than what the guys on the floor do. So, you know, again, not an easy call no matter which way it goes. No, you're absolutely correct. I mean, you're. it's not like you have instant replay where you're getting a close-up and you got a camera on the baseline. That's not what we have here, folks. We're here on the opposite side of the gym. That's a very difficult call for you to make, even though you are our resident expert when it comes to officiating, Mr. Larry Babcock. Yeah, you know, occasionally I know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, that, that, really is a, that really is a tough call, and it's, it's all about angles. You know, as, as we like to say, you know, you won't ever hear me tell a coach he's wrong because his angle is different than mine on a, on a particular play. 
So it's it's a game of angles, and you know, from our angle, that's a tough call for for us to even say if he got it right or wrong. All right, here's Westville bringing it in. Here's Hannon. 25 seconds, we're tied. Hannon right through the lane, scoop, score! Gavin Hannon puts Westville up by two. Time out, Time out counts. Wow, this place is electric. Gavin Hannon. Full timeout for the Mustangs. Straight line drive, and at the last seconds, he got so deep into the basket area that he put it right up where the defender couldn't reach it. An outstanding basket there. And we've got the replay of that coming up here. You see here, Gavin Hannon driving from the top of the key. Just a great job. Absolutely great job. So now it's the Blackhawks 53 and the Mustangs 51. But still a lot of time. 13.9 on the clock. Yeah, and listen, if, if you're Westville right now, you've got the lead. Okay, so you want to protect the three-point line. Okay, I'll give up a, a two and go to overtime, but what you don't want to do is allow him to shoot a three, anybody from Couch to shoot a three, and we know Couch can hit threes at will. They've been doing it this whole tournament. So if I'm Coach Eubank, I'm telling our guys, stay at the three, protect the three, give up the two, worst case scenario, we go into overtime. They do have a lot of guys that can hit it, but tonight, Connor Croft is the only one that has put any threes in, and all of them came in the first half. Yeah, but he'll be guarded by Hannon here, it looks like. And that's the thing, limiting perimeter shots is going to be crucial here with under 14 seconds to play. It comes in to, to Croft, and Hannon is on him. Croft's got to watch that arm. Here's Baker, down to five. And the pass is stolen, and a foul by Anweiler. With 2.5 left. This place is on fire. It is electric in here. As it appears, assuming that free throws are hit, that Westville may have just secured the, this victory. And Westville's going to take a timeout. Coach Eubank's going to settle his group down. It's a 30-second timeout. That was a big steal. That was a big stop right there. When you look at this Westville Blackhawks team, the journey that they have been on this season, this tournament, to see this game be decided by two players, Gavin Hannon and Caden Pepper at the very end, these are the two youngest players that play in their rotation, both of them sophomores. That was, that was an incredible, I mean, they just let Gavin Hannon with 13 seconds just drive. Nobody guarded him. Nobody stepped in. Either. Nobody stopped the ball. Nobody no. stopped the ball at all. He had a full head of steam. And you wonder, and the thing is, is that he's been a locomotive all night. Right, exactly. All night he's been a locomotive getting to, to the paint as often as he's wanted. And they didn't stop him when it mattered most. All right, so for Caden Pepper, it's a one and one. He needs to make them both to end this game. First one, good. They are 12 of 13 from the free throw line tonight. Mike, wasn't it Caden Peppers who took that hard foul just a couple nights ago here? Yes, uh, I believe Second it was Second free Pepper. throw, no good, guys. Vic from half court. No, and Westville wins the title. And you're going to see the keg changing hands here. The couch cheerleaders are getting ready to hand that over to, to Westville. Somebody from Westville is going to go grab that here before long. Wow, what a game. What an absolute game. And the, the Westville players go get that keg. And it's back in the hands of Westville. The keg has changed hands, ladies and gentlemen, is in the hands of Westville. And it will be painted orange and black after tonight. And 
Jerry, when you when you look at what this Westville team did, they played a very tough Boone team this morning and gritted out a win. They were down at 1.9 points in this game and came back and gritted out a 54-51 victory to win the conference tournament championship and win the keg. Absolutely unbelievable. Hats off to Westville. It was a heck of an effort. It was a heck of a game. At Westville, the 2022 PCC Boys Tournament Champions. Only the second PCC title for the Westville Blackhawks. Now we're going to keep it right here for all of the award presentations. And then we'll get to our final numbers and awards and all of those good things as always. What so Westville great. improves to 11 and 5. Well, Counts falls to 10 and 5. The basket to take the lead, a game winner. What were you thinking when there was 13 seconds on the clock and you're driving down like a bat out of hell? I have to get something in. I got to try something out, you know? That's about it. You had to get something, and that's something you did. Let's get the keg in here. All right, so I got a question. How does it feel to be a PCC champion? Awesome. It's awesome. It's a great, uh, it's, uh, it's a great atmosphere. I love it. Tell me a little bit about your team. You've done an outstanding. You've done an outstanding job of getting to the basket anytime you want it. But you've also done a great job of facilitating as well. So tell me a little bit about the guys around you. I love them. I love them all my heart. I, they do everything for me. They're gonna help you paint this keg. Yeah. All right. You, hey, you go celebrate with your teammate. All right. You take. Hey, back to you guys. Welcome back. And as you see. The Westville players are around the keg, and they're they're accepting the keg. So that keg will be painted Westville black and orange. And now we're getting ready to award the Mental Attitude Award. Principal Ben Anderson of South Central High School and the PCC president is presenting our award tonight. We begin with the Emmy D uh, Dismore Award. The Mental Attitude in Boys Basketball has been named the Emmy Dismore Award, Mental Attitude, in honor of the former superintendent who served the Porter County Conference for 29 years. Although the naming criteria has changed throughout the years, this award has been presented each year since 1927. The recipient of this award is selected by the PCC coaches and judged according to the following criteria: Sportsmanship. Athletic eligibility, attitude throughout the high school career towards athletics, high school, training teammates, coaches, and opponents. Grade point average and school citizenship throughout the high school career. This year's winner of the 2022 Emmy Dinsmore Mental, Mental Attitude Award in Boys Basketball from La Crosse High School, Kyle Gorski. This crowd, absolute pandemonium. We're here with Coach Eubank. Coach Eubank, your first ever PCC tournament championship. How do you feel? I'm really proud of our guys. Uh, they've, they've overcome a lot of adversity just this year. Uh, and the basketball they've played this calendar year has been fantastic. And, and I'm honestly, I'm just lucky that I have that front row seat to watch them. Because these guys right now, they're just coaching themselves out there. And I just, I yell at them to, to make shots and rebound. And they just do what they do. And I'm, I'm really proud of these group, this group of guys. They've worked hard. Uh, and they've really earned this. And I just, I'm through the moon for them. Really, really happy for them. And it's a great honor, obviously, to win this tournament. Um, and, I mean, my guy, Couch, is a really good ball club. We beat a really good Boone Grove team today. Um, I, I'm a little surprised we had enough gas to finish it in the tank because that, that was a lot of tough basketball today. Coach, winning two games in one day prepares you for a regional. Can you expound upon that a little bit for the folks at home? You know, I, I normally don't think about that type of stuff during the season too much, 
but I, I put together our itinerary for today with that in mind. Um, we've got a team good enough to make a run, and we got really good teams in our sectional. So I mean, it's not a any any kind of a you know we don't get an advantage for winning the PCC, but uh, you know that was absolutely a, a thought for us was how we went about today. It's how we'll go about a regional if we're fortunate enough to get there. Um, and, and the guys just responded so great. Caden Pepper, you've done an outstanding job in this tournament. You're only a sophomore. How did it feel being at the end of, at the free throw line at the end of the game there, shooting free throws with the PCC championship on the line? It felt great. I don't know. My chest was hurting bad, though. <laughs> but I felt like I could make the free throws, and I'm glad I got that steal at the end. Tell us a little bit about your team. How do you guys prepare? Is this something that coming into this tournament, you guys thought that you had a chance at it? Tell us a little bit about what your thoughts were yourself and as a team coming into this tournament. I feel like we were all ready and we all wanted it so bad. We, all, we just came out here, we played, and we just stuck together. We, we were together the whole time. How much fun is it going to be painting this keg? Oh, it's going to be fun. <laughs> hey, you go cut down the net, all right? Hey, guys, back to you. Thank you very much, Mike, and uh, Coach Eubank made, uh, talked a little bit about the sectional when Mike asked about it, so we've taken a look. 2A, North Judson, that's where they'll play. Boone Grove, who they played earlier today in a tough matchups in that sectional. North Judson's 10-1, and one, and could potentially face Hebron again. So Coach Eubanks is right. Enjoy tonight, nothing's given. North Judson will be a tough sectional for them. But another five weeks on the boys' side before they have to worry about the postseason. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they played great tonight. They, they definitely showed that they could compete in the tournament atmosphere. And as you saw on the screen there, they were just awarded with the Times Gold Ball. Uh, and uh, the game ball that was donated by Blyce and the gold ball that was donated by the Times. Um, and then as we were doing the interviews with Coach Eubank, um, they awarded Hebron High School was the winner of the Spirit uh, competition during the tournament. So congratulations to Hebron, uh, dance champions, Spirit champions. Congratulations to them. But my goodness, what a great job by this Westville Blackhawks team. And what a reversal from the matchup at Westville on December 17th that Couts had won 67 to 42. It was a, it was a kind of a wide margin of victory for them at that time. Westville really came out and played played their hearts out tonight and came up with a big victory. How about some final stats here? Sure, we could do that. Let's take a look first at the victorious Westville Blackhawks who improved to 11-5 and five with the tournament championship. Julian, Elias, uh, Julian Ellis leads the way with 25 points. Nobody else in double figures for Westville, but Gavin Hannon Finished with nine, including the game winner there in the final seconds. Kenny Pepper had seven. Caden Pepper had five. Andrew Husky had four. Cody Brooks had two. Sam Bovard had two. 14-11, 15 and 14 over four quarters for Westview's total of 54. For Couch, who falls to 10 and five, they were led in scoring by Aaron Ketchmark and Connor Croft, both with 17 points. Joe Vick had eight. Tristan Ballas at five, and Matthew Baker had four, 17, 13, 15, and six over four quarters for Couts for their total of 51. Here's some of the shooting numbers from the ball game. For Westville, 18 of 43 from the floor for 42%. Six of 10 from the three-point line, 60%. That's outstanding three-point shooting. And 12 of 14 from the free-throw line for 86%. Westville in two games today missed just three free-throws. You guys both talked about it during the broadcast. In tournaments, free throw shooting is critical. We've been talking about it all week. Every single game that we've done, we talked about the importance of free throws, and it got it done tonight. You look at the two games Westville won today by a total margin of six points, and the difference is their free throws. They missed two free throws in two games. That's impressive. For Couts, Excellent shooting from the floor, 20 of 40 for 50%, but just 4 of 12 from 3 points, but that's 33%, and that really isn't bad. You get that 33, 34, 35%. 7 of 10 at the free throw line for 70%, which at the high school level also is not bad, but it just wasn't enough. 
So Westville, they win the tournament title, 54-51 over Couch. So let's do the awards here first. Time to name the peak performers, celebrating the best performances on the court. We're going to begin with Westville, and I think this one's a no-brainer, guys. Go ahead. Say it. Somebody say it or I'm going to. Ellis. Julian Ellis, 25 points. And his quickness, his shooting, defense, rebounds, he just did it all. And he did it whenever he wanted to for the most part. Julian Ellis, 25 points tonight. That's your peak performer for Westville for Couts. Guys, choose it. Uh, honestly, I, I think you got to go with, uh, I'm, I'm going to take two here. I, I think you got to go with Catchmark, Aaron Catchmark. And uh, I think you got to go with Connor Croft. I think both of them had really good nights. They, they both did what they were supposed to do in this game. And coincidentally, I think they both had, correct me if I'm wrong, 16, 17, 17 points. 17 points. Uh, respectively. So both of them together are 34 of the 51 points for Couts. I, I think you have to go with those two. Without them, Couts isn't even in this game. So there are your peak performers celebrating the best performances on the court. Play of the game presented by the IKORCC. Build your future, IKORCC. I think that one's pretty much a no-brainer as well. It's going to be Gavin Hannon's coast-to-coast layup. Got a replay run in there, Nathan, of it to win the ball game for Westville. So that is your play of the game presented by IKORCC. Training, professionalism, and partnerships for economic development, the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. And finally, time to name the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game. It's brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Who do you guys like for the Blue Collar Player of the Game? Uh, I think you have to go with Gavin Hannon, without a doubt. Uh, he, he played gritty the whole tournament, but especially today. Going coast to coast, offensively, defensively, has the basket there at the end. I, I think, you know, you have to go with him. Gavin Hannon, that's your Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the game all right that's going to wrap everything up for an entire week 16 basketball games this week here at the porter county conference tournament some people i do want to um speak about management team of the region sports network our executive producer is chris ramirez our coordinating producer is nathan laird our coordinating producer also larry babcock but folks I don't want to forget anybody because there were so many people involved in the broadcast this this entire week. Thanks to all of you that came to help us out here at the Region Sports Network and work this week, Nathan. Gets, can you remember some of them that I may have forgotten from earlier in the week? Yeah, you guys got me here? Yeah, okay. I hear you loud and clear. Um, for, for those who are watching at home, it, it's, it's been a tough week. Um, like all small businesses, we're affected by what's going on in the world. Um, and our, our guys who have worked this week, um, I, have to, I have to give them a special shout-out for all the effort. Um, 14 games here in the PCC tournament uh, over six days on top of a uh, boys-girls basketball doubleheader at Chesterton. Or excuse me, at Crown Point versus Chesterton. 16 games in, 16, uh, in six days uh, here on the Region Sports Network and the Porter County Sports Channel. And i got to recognize all the guys who uh, were a huge part of that. They made this possible. Uh, it all starts at the top of our executive producer, Chris Ramirez. Uh, the rest of our list, not in order of importance. Everybody contributed in such a major way. Uh, Michael Bradner handling play-by-play the first few days of the PCC tournament. Matt Welsend uh, on uh, the color analysis. Uh, Mike Jamia doing a great job. Color, play-by-play, running down and getting interviews. Mike did an amazing job. Larry Babcock, coordinating producer, doing production, doing color. Uh, all sorts of great stuff. Andrew Johnson. Uh, on the camera at Boone Grove. Isaiah Gransbury doing color analysis and camera. Uh, David Walters, our stat guy, joining the team this week, uh, giving us all these uh, amazing stats that we've been giving you during the broadcast. Zach Miller uh, just coming out of quarantine, coming in and uh, doing camera and production. Jay Simmons coming in today uh, to do some color analysis. Nate Ramian doing production. Jerry Ziska, it's been a long time since we've had you on a basketball broadcast. It was You're fun. stepping up, you know, with some of these absences. Um, and, of course, can't forget the guys who I mentioned. We had a doubleheader again last night uh, at Crown Point. Mike Zajac, Doug Nelson, Rich Castillo. All these guys were asked a lot, uh, a lot of them this week, to do different roles. Roles that maybe they don't have the most experience in. But it, was, it wasn't, oh, I can't do that. It was, Nathan, what can I do to help? Chris, what can I do to help? Larry, what can I do to help? 
These guys stepped up in a big way, and we'd be remiss if we didn't mention all of them and all the effort they put in to bring these PCC tournament games to you guys this week across the country. We've had so many uh, people tell us that they're watching in Wisconsin and Tennessee, all over the country, and it's because of those crew members that I just mentioned um, that you guys were able to watch those at home here on the Porter County Sports Channel. And again, with everything that's going on, with some of the, uh, the hits we took this week of guys being unavailable um, due to circumstances out of their control, um, Illness, a, a giant pat like on the back. Said, yep. Um, want to rem remember Bob Guerrero as well. Bob he came Guerrero, out yep, tonight to do a video, video uh, camera. I, I didn't mention but Bob coming in to do camera tonight as well. Um, of course, I also want to thank uh, the athletic directors of the two schools we were at uh, this week. Joe Wagner here at Couts. Josh Russell, the athletic director at Boone Grove. First class hospitality the entire week at both sites. It was, you know, every time they would see me, hey, is there anything else we can do for you? Are you guys good? Do you need anything else? Just an amazing uh, job by both athletic directors. And, of course, the fans here who came in, um, you know, and talked to us. So many people want to stop and chat and tell us that they enjoyed the broadcast. You know, the, the, the friendliness we get here in the PCC tournament is second to none. And also a uh, big thank you to all the coaches as well, making time for these post-game interviews, pre-game interviews. Uh, it, it's been amazing, and I hope everybody's enjoyed the coverage. But like I said, I'm going to get out of here without recognizing our, our team who stepped up in a big way this week. And Nathan, Nathan I want to also thank the principals and the athletic directors for allowing yep. us to bring this coverage. Um, without them, we could not be here. And so we want to thank every principal, every athletic director in the Porter County Conference, it's been great working with them. And finally, we want to thank you, the viewers. We do this for you. We hope that you enjoy the coverage. We hope you enjoy the games. And we thank you for spending time with us watching high school sports here on the PCS channel and on Regent Sports Network. Because without you, this really wouldn't be worth doing. So I think that about wraps it up. Fortunately, guys, really, Couts did not end up with the home court advantage tonight that we thought we would see in the girls game earlier tonight. South Central stays undefeated with a 53-31 to win over Couts. And here in the championship game, Westville over the Mustangs of Couts, 54-51. to That will do it for the crew. Everybody take a good long nap tomorrow. Sleep in in the morning, whatever you need to do. Catch up and get some rest. Nathan, you too. <laughs> All right, thanks again to all. Hope you enjoyed everything. Have a wonderful weekend for all of us here at Region Sports Network. Good night, and you're watching Game Night in the PCC on the PCS channel.